Hello again. In this video, I want to show you how to install this chatbot with zero coding and then start using it in three different ways. You can either chat with your documents so it has a built-in rag system or chat with YouTube videos or use it as an AI chatbot, something like ChatGPT. So last week, NVIDIA announced a very interesting project called ChatFit RTX. And if you check the website, you will see that you can download the chatbot directly from here and this chatbot is only for users with access to series 30 or 40. So you need at least eight gigabytes of VRAM. And also they are saying that you don't need to have access to the internet. So how would that work? So as soon as you hit download now, you will see that the size of this chatbot is around 35 gigabytes, which means that you are downloading the large language models locally on your PC. So that is why you don't need to have access to the internet. And when you download the chatbot and install it, you're going to get this user interface. So I want to show you what are the options that you have with this chatbot. But before that, let me quickly explain how you can actually set it up. The first step is to just simply download the chatbot using the download button right on the top of this website. And as soon as you extract it, you can run the installation and install it on your PC. So throughout the installation, the process is very simple as well. The first step is you just need to agree to the terms and conditions. In the second step, you need to select the models that you want to use with this chatbot. So there are three different options that you can select, chat with RTX, Llama to 13 billion, and Mistral 7 billion. In the next step, you set the path wherever you want to install the chatbot, and then you just simply install it. So during the installation, it is going to install Miniconda for you, CUDA Toolkit, and the installation itself takes something around 20 to 30 minutes, depending on your system's specifications. And finally, after you installed it, you can just simply close and run the chatbot. So when you run it, this is the first page that you're going to see in the chatbot. As you can see on the left, I have the option to select the AI model, and I have access to two models, Mistral 7 billion, and Llama 2 13 billion. And to explain this info without going into the details, it means that NVIDIA somehow made it easier for us to load these two large language models without the need to have access to an extremely powerful GPU. So we are loading a quantized version of these large language models. And then on the right, we have access to three different features of this chatbot. The first feature is folder path. So we can pass a folder which contains all our documents. The second option is YouTube URL. We can also pass YouTube URLs and start chatting with them. Or we can simply treat this chatbot as something like ChatGPT. So let's test them one by one and see how good this chatbot is. So let's go with Mistral 7 billion and say hello to it. Hello, how can I assist you today? So let's ask a more technical question, for example. Explain how to fine tune a large language model. Fine tuning a large language model involves adjusting the model's parameters to better fit a specific task or domain. First data collection, two data processing, model selection, fine tuning, evaluation, hyperparameter tuning, and deployment. Well, that is a very decent answer in my opinion. It didn't go into the details. It is also giving us some examples for how to select our large language model, which is nice. I take it as a very good answer. And by the way, the speed of the answer was very surprising to me. The speed is so good. So I'm using an RTX 3090 and I have access to 24 gigabytes of VRAM on my system. And for me, at least the speed is very nice. Now let's also test the memory here. So if I ask what was my previous prompt, I apologize, but I do not have access to your previous prompt. So I would have been surprised if it could actually give me an answer. And there is a simple reason behind that. We are dealing with a 7 billion parameter model and we definitely have limitations with regard to the context length that we can pass to this model. Adding memory means adding text to the input of the model, which means that the model needs to deal with a longer context length and that would definitely confuse a 7 billion parameter model. So, so far, I'm very happy with the way that it is giving me the answer. The answers look really nice and also the speed is so good. 
and we just saw that it doesn't have a memory. So before switching and testing the 13 billion parameter model, let me also show you how much GPU memory this model is using. So as you can see here, this model is using 7.9 gigabytes of GPU memory. So that is why on the website they mentioned that you need at least 8 gigabytes of GPU memory because if you have it, then you at least can run the 7 billion parameter model. Now let's switch to the 13 billion parameter model and see how that works. So the model is ready and with this one I want to test two things. First, I want to pass the same question that I passed to our 7 billion parameter model to check the speed and also see how this one uh, perform. And also I want to test hallucination with this one. So let's say So if I ask the same question, it gives me the answer, sure, I would be happy to help. Fine tuning a large language model involves adjusting the model's hyperparameters and ways to improve its, its performance. Again, it is correct. And as you can see, this model gave us a longer and more detailed answer. So that is interesting. We are using a 13 billion parameter model and clearly this model is more powerful than the 7 billion parameter model. But now let's ask a second question and see if this model hallucinates. So as of today, there is no GPT-5 yet out there and this model definitely does not have the knowledge about GPT-5. So if I ask, so tell me about GPT-5. Sure, I'd happy to help. GPT-5 is a language model designed by Meta AI that is designed to generate human-like text-based. That is not correct. Keep it in mind that just like any large language model out there, such as GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, these two models are also prone to hallucination. So now let's test the rag side of this chatbot. So as I said, there are three options here. And the first option is folder path. So if you select this option, you will see that there are three type of documents that are supported, .txt, .pdf, and .txt. Doc. In this folder, I have multiple documents and I've already selected it. And as soon as I start asking a question about those documents, this chatbot should be able to give me an answer. And I'm using the same documents that I used in a previous video called Llama Index versus Langchain. So if you have already watched the video, you know that there is a document with three stories on it and each story uh, is about a separate character. So let's see if our chatbot knows those characters right now. So if I ask, who is Fred? It says, based on the given context information, there is no direct mention of a person named Fred, which is wrong. However, there is a character named Fred, the redfish in the story. So actually there was a character named Fred the redfish, and that is the right answer. But in the beginning, the model was a little bit confused. So let's ask another question from a different document. One of the other documents is the paper for Vision Transformer. So I want to just ask, what is Vision Transformer? Based on the given context information, the Vision Transformer is a direct application of transformers to image recognition. So the chatbot somehow was able to see some content from the paper and my question was a very general question. So any part of the paper could probably be retrieved and this is the response that it is giving us. And one thing that you have probably noticed is that the chatbot also adds a reference file at the end. That is a nice touch from NVIDIA that I liked from the built-in rag side of this chatbot. So if you click on any of these references, it is going to actually open the reference with whatever PDF reader that you use. So this is the story PDF that I have in that folder. And if I click on this one, it opens the paper for me. So again, in that folder, I have a document which is about a company that I created for another video uh, for fine tuning large language models. So it is a document that I try to replicate the customer support of a company. And in that document, there is a question that I want to ask our chatbot. How do I perform a factory reset on my cube triangle alpha smartphone? So this is the PDF file for that question. And this is the question. To perform a factory reset, go to settings, system, reset options, and erase all data. Go to setting, scroll down, and select system. 
choose reset options, select erase all data. So that is the right answer. It also added a scroll down here, which I didn't see. Yeah, so we don't have the scroll down thing that it just added to the response and it just added that by itself. So again, be aware that hallucination is part of this chatbot, even though it is a very small change to the original answer. Usually when you have a rack system, you want it to be as precise as possible. But overall, I'm very happy with the performance of this chatbot. Beside that, the inference time is still very fast, which I'm more than satisfied with the speed of this chatbot. And if we check the amount of GPU memory that it requires, you can see that it requires 12.1 gigabytes. You definitely need a GPU with at least 14 gigabytes of VRAM to be able to run the 13 billion parameter model without any issue. All right, so we just saw the RAG side of this chatbot with the 13 billion parameter model. I'm not going to test it with the 7 billion parameter model. Uh, in general, the performance is very nice. I want to test the last feature of the chatbot, which is YouTube URL. So if you select YouTube URL, you can see that there is a number here, which I checked and I think it is the number of URLs and content that you can expect the model to check and give you the answer. But anyhow, I want to pass two YouTube URLs to our chatbot and I start asking questions from them. So I prepared these two URLs, which are my previous videos. And if I start passing these URLs, so the first thing is, it is going to take that YouTube URL, extract the text from it, and store it on your local PC. So definitely for this one, you need to have access to the internet. And if you check here, you can see that it is storing the content for me. So let me remove them and let's pass the URL again. Okay, just process the URL. And if I open this folder here, we see that it just added the content of that YouTube video. So if I ask a question about this YouTube video, for example, what is the video about? The video appears to be about designing and evaluating a chatbot using different techniques and evaluating the performance of the chatbot using various questions. I mean, it got the point, but again, that question was very general. So let's pass the other YouTube video as well. So if I check, I will see that now I have two contents from two different URLs. And if I start chatting with these two contents, one question that I ask from this chatbot, which I'm sure that this chatbot does not have the knowledge for that question, is about the recent announcement of OpenAI. They announced a model named Sora, as you probably already know. So if I ask what is Sora, I expect this model to be able to give me the answer right now. So Sora is a machine learning model that generates images and videos. The video description mentions OpenAI Sora, suggestion that it is a model developed by OpenAI. However, without more information about Sora, so let's go further. Here are some possible questions and answer based on the context information. What is the purpose of Sora? Based on the video description, Sora is a machine learning model that can generate images and videos. This is interesting. So they also suggest Q and A's based on the context of that video. And at the end, we can see also some metadata about that video, the title of the video, channel, and the upload date. So that is a very nice touch from NVIDIA. And I should say that I'm more than satisfied with the performance of the chatbot right now. I mean, considering the fact that this is a 13 billion parameter model, this is an amazing performance. So for the last question, I want to test and see if we have a memory with the 13 billion parameter model. So if I ask what was my previous prompt, Based on the given information, I cannot access any previous prompts or context. Please provide the specific context or prompt you are referring to. So it is giving me a reference file because regardless of what you ask, a vector search is happening behind the scene and some content uh, is being retrieved. 
And in that case, apparently, NVIDIA just uh, didn't try to distinguish uh, when the model is able to give us the, an the answer versus when the model is not able to give us the answer. And they just added the reference at the end. I didn't expect this model to also have a memory because 13 billion is still not considered as a large language model, as a big model, and we still have the issue with the context length. So before I wrap up the video, I just want to show you a weird behavior that I saw from the chatbot. So if you choose YouTube URL, and if you start asking a random question, for example, in this case, for the first question, I'm asking, what was my previous prompt? So the model is not giving me a proper answer, but instead it is just going through everything that it can find. That question is not right because there was no previous prompt. And definitely this is not the answer to it. So yes, when you select the YouTube URL side, the models might behave a little bit weird, at least in a more unexpected way. And just keep that in mind. So considering the fact that this chatbot does not require any coding skills and you can install it within 30 minutes window time and this is what you get in the output, this is amazing. Now that you know the pros and cons of this chatbot, I definitely recommend you to test it and don't forget to let me know in the comment section what you think about this chatbot.